really matters? That might be the most important question you can ask. So let's talk about it. Welcome to What Really Matters podcast, Everyday Spirituality with Karen Wyatt. Thanks for joining me here again for another episode. I'm going to talk today about what to do with procrastination. And but first, I am going to procrastinate for just a moment because I realize there are a few things I should be announcing to you from time to time that I always forget to say. The first is that all of these audios from the What Really Matters podcast are now available on my YouTube channel. It is End of Life University on YouTube. And you can go there if you're if you like YouTube and you prefer to listen there. Find the channel and the What Really Matters podcasts are on a separate p- playlist. So hit the playlist tab, find What Really Matters, and you'll see all of the episodes from starting with number one posted there on YouTube. While you're there, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers, and I'm getting very close now. I think I only need 65 more subscribers to make it to 1,000, so I would really appreciate that. And also, I wanted to let you know that you can help support this podcast and the End of Life University podcast just to help me defray the financial expenses of creating two podcasts so that I can keep them both on the air. You can go to this webpage, eoluniversity.com slash support. There are three different ways you can make contributions. One is to join my Patreon page, Patreon com slash E-O-L-U. There you become a member either on a monthly or annual basis and you'll get certain rewards. There are some physical rewards that will be sent to you, some merchandise, a sticker, um, a mug or a mini poster that you'll receive by mail for becoming a, a patron and also some bonus episodes, end of life news updates that I record every month for you where I review all the current literature and news related to the end of life and share with you a summary of kind of what's happening in the world in that area. So that's my Patreon page. But you can also simply buy me a coffee, which is a one time very small donation, um, the cost of a cup of coffee. Uh, that from time to time, if you like a particular episode, you could just send me a cup of coffee. And and, um, I appreciate that very much because I love coffee. And the third way is to make a one-time donation through PayPal. And you can use your PayPal account or a credit card there. And that could be any amount. You set the amount. And it can just be a a one-time donation if you feel like doing that, you don't want to, but you don't want to join the Patreon page and make ongoing contributions. So again, go to eoluniversity.com slash support, and that will help keep this podcast on the air. Also, if you subscribe or follow the podcast and leave a rating and review wherever you happen to listen, that's also really helps this podcast to be shown to more people who are looking for content like this. So thank you in advance for any of those steps that you decide to take to show support. And I do really appreciate the messages I've received from many of you about particular episodes that you found helpful. That's very informative to me. So my topic for today, which is something I am personally working on right now today, is the topic of procrastination, which has always been an issue for me basically my whole life. And even though I'm someone, I get tons of creative ideas, I have lots of energy for creation, I often procrastinate when it comes down to actually getting things done. And right now I'm procrastinating on some writing that I'm trying to do. There, well, there are a couple of books at least that I really want to finish writing and um, a few more that I actually have in my head that I would also like to write. So uh, there's a lot up there, a lot of ideas going through my head, a lot of things I'd like to accomplish. And yet when I sit down and try to write, I become just filled with dread 
and fear. And I end up, I mean, it's a great way for me to get housework done. I end up doing the dishes or the laundry. I find a million other things that I have to do first before I can start writing. And then soon the day is over. I never got around to it. I didn't get the writing done. And oh, well, I'll I'll do that another day. So I realize this is a habit of mine in some ways. And particularly if I feel a lot of maybe a lack of confidence about the project I'm trying to take on. I'm not sure if that's what it is. And uh, the experts all say procrastination is really around the fear of failure, the fear that you're not good enough or you won't be able to do it. And certainly that's operative for me. Uh, Sometimes, especially the things that I tend to write are very vulnerable honest and open tellings of parts of my life. And so there is a lot of fear and discomfort sometimes about sharing the stories that I feel should be shared and the knowledge and wisdom I've learned through those stories. But it also subjects me to potential scrutiny and criticism from other people. And I feel very sensitive about that and very afraid I'm less afraid of failure in the sense that if I write a book, it won't sell very many copies because I've already done that. (laughs) That's happened with all of my books. I haven't sold nearly as many copies as initially I had hoped I would. And so I'm kind of over that now. I kind of expect like, you know what, there's a limited audience for what I do and that's okay. I need to write because I need to write it because I feel it inside of me that this message has to get out and these stories have to be told. Yet part of me sabotages doing that work and puts up obstacles. So I've been doing a little reading about you know, what do, how do I help myself with this? How do I help myself get over this procrastination so that I can actually finish some of these projects that I've started and stop dawdling and wasting time on them. And first of all, I came across a book in which the author talks about the fact that procrastination can actually be a good thing. And he suggests that sometimes slowing down our response time helps us make better decisions and maybe do better work. So reading that actually was helpful for me to stop judging myself so harshly for procrastinating and to say, it's okay to take my time. It's okay to slow down a little bit. It's just that what I don't want to do is to never actually do the writing, to never actually do it, do it or finish the task. So it's okay to go slow. It's okay to take my time and ease into it if that's important, because maybe I need to take my time so that a new idea will come to me or my perspective will shift on one part of the story or some some new addition will come to me that I need to include in in the writing that I'm doing. So it's okay to go slow. And that was really good. That permission, granting myself permission to procrastinate here and there and to slow down and not push myself so hard or rush into things. But the fact is, it's not that I'm rushing into anything. I'm not doing it at all. So I'll allow myself some procrastination and to slow down, but I do need to get going and keep working on this. So again, I read a little bit about procrastination and the fact that procrastination sometimes can lead to a certain paralysis of action. And I've definitely been in that place where I feel like I simply, I can't decide. I can't decide the next step. I can't decide what to do. I don't know how to organize this. I don't know exactly how to write it. I don't know what the theme or the tone should be. Therefore, I can't do it at all. And so I've definitely been in that place of paralysis and unable to move forward forward because I can't make a decision or a choice. And this particular author talked about how along with procrastination usually comes severe self-judgment, self-criticism, and self-depreciation. So it isn't just a fear of criticism from the outside and criticism for others, but procrastination leads you to a lot of self-judgment about the fact that you're procrastinating. And 
further, I, I went on and read a study that said that people prone to procrastination also tend to have high levels of stress and low self-compassion scores. That caught my attention right away because I've mentioned this in a couple of episodes before. I've been working this year on self-compassion. That's been a big goal of mine and I've been doing some practices and working on it. So it all started to come clear. You might remember too, I did an episode on the inner critic, which goes right along with procrastination. Of course, I'm my own inner critic gets involved. I procrastinate for whatever reasons that I'm I'm fearful of getting started. Then my inner critic steps in, criticizes me for procrastinating, which makes me fear even more judgment and even more paralyzed. And it becomes this vicious downward spiral. So this rang true for me that self-compassion is one of the issues and that I need to continue my work on how to have compassion for myself, particularly around this area of, of procrastination and not finishing things that need to be finished. So I reviewed all my self-compassion materials and found a little bit more about a self-compassion break, which I think that's a great idea. And the author suggests take this self-compassion break multiple times during the day. For me, every time I sit down at my desk and, and I know that I should start working on my writing, I can do a self-compassion break first as I start it just to help get me in the right frame of mind and to get me out of that spiral of self-judgment and criticism and fear that tends to paralyze me. And so this little self-compassion break, I think I probably talked about something like this before when I talked about some of the self-compassion practices that I've been trying, but this is just a little bit different. So this is a break in the moment when you stop and say, what am I experiencing right now? And so for me, as I get ready to start writing, that would be fear and dread and a resistance, like I don't want to do this. I don't want to start it. I'm afraid, either afraid that I'm going to tell the truth and reveal something that will cause me to be criticized by other people, or I'm afraid that I'm not good enough to write the stories and the things that, that are in my head that I would like to be able to create. Both of those are equally strong fears for me. So what am I experiencing right now? Yes, fear, dread, some self-blame, a lack of confidence. So the next step is to pause, put a hand on heart. And this I love, I do this all the time. And I've talked about it before, when you put your hand on your heart, just that physical action helps the release of oxytocin, which is the love hormone that helps us feel more positive and more connected. And so I just love this. This is the sweetest little suggestion is to put your hand on your heart and say, Oh, sweetheart, which is, that's very sweet. That's very touching to talk to myself in that kind of language. I don't, I don't ever refer to myself in any sort of endearing or loving way, but pause, put your hand on your heart, say, oh, sweetheart, or something similar to that. And that activates the caregiving system within us, which helps us become more self-nurturing and self-compassionate. So cool. I start by looking at what I'm experiencing right now, putting my hand on my heart saying, oh, sweetheart, that's nice. I like that. That's simple. And I can do that each time I sit down to start to write. And then the next step is to have a little mantra. And it might be something like, may I accept myself just as I am right here, right now. So just as I am, I'm fearful. Just as I am, I don't have as much confidence as I wish I had. Just as I am, maybe I'm not a good enough writer to write what I want to write. 
So accepting all of those things about myself and just allowing them to be there. And then the next half of the mantra is to say, may I feel safe in this moment. I really like that thought because it creates this idea that I am responsible for my own safety. If there are any threats to me, I, I'm creating them in my own head and I'm responsible for making myself feel safe. And my response to my fear and dread is simply to create a feeling of safety within myself and remind myself. And so this, of course, is my higher consciousness telling my lower self, you're safe. It's okay. You're safe. You can, you can write whatever you write. It's fine. Don't judge it. Just accept at just as you are right now. And whatever you create is fine just as it is. So I really like that mantra also and the idea that it invokes higher consciousness to soothe this lower consciousness and lower mind that I have, which is where all these thoughts come from, that I can't do it, I'm not good enough, I'm afraid, I don't even want to try. So the fourth step is to breathe in inner peacefulness and comfort. So that would be taking a couple of deep breaths again with hand on heart, just to like get that relaxation response because the deep breathing we've talked about before activates the parasympathetic nervous system and that helps get us out of fight or flight reaction and into a more relaxed state where we can be more focused and more creative. And so a couple of deep breaths, really helpful right here. And then the fifth thing is to do something to feel a sense of movement in a positive direction. And so it might be like, I get it for me, sometimes the most helpful thing I can do if I am stuck and I cannot write a word is to do some research to look something up related to what I want to write, to look for a a quote that I could use in my writing or look for a study that's been done or some other information that's out there that I might want to use and incorporate into what I'm writing. And sometimes that step of just doing one thing, one positive thing toward my goal is enough to open the door and help me get started. But this author says, you know, maybe you can't just simply cannot do one thing on the project that you're procrastinating about. It's helpful if you can do anything, anything at all. And so maybe you choose a completely different activity and do something Or also just sit down for a moment and express gratitude. Think of something that's going well that you're thankful for, or maybe talk to a friend. Although for me, that would lead me way far down the procrastination path because because I could call a friend and talk for a few hours and waste all the time that I had available for my task. So for me, that is probably not the best solution in the moment. But I like this idea of expressing gratitude, of at least just doing one thing to create some movement in a positive direction toward the goal that you want to accomplish. So, um, that's something I'm trying to think of lots of different things for myself that I can work on. If I can't write, I cannot think of a single thing to write. What could I do? And uh, again, reading something else that's related to what I want to write, looking for studies or research uh, that will help me in my writing. That is that's very beneficial. Again, that's part of the whole writing process anyway, to do the research. And that's something I can do if I don't feel creative enough to write my own words down. So I'm, I'm going to review those five steps of this uh, self-compassion break, which I really love. And again, it can be done like multiple times a day. And I, and for me, I'm planning to start doing it each time I sit down to try to write something. So Um, First of all, evaluate what am I experiencing right now emotionally or, you know, what emotions are present or what thoughts are going through my head right now as I try to write. Uh, Number two, pause with hand on heart and say something like self-loving, like, oh, sweetheart. (laughs) And I don't know if I can say that to myself. We'll see. I might try. I'll try. Um, Or, oh, honey, or, oh, my dear. 
something that is uh, endearing and that creates a feeling of closeness and intimacy. But again, the hand on the heart is also really important. So the third step, again, with hand on heart is to say some sort of a mantra. And I love this one. May I accept myself just as I am right here, right now. May I feel safe in this moment. Love that. Then next, breathe in inner peacefulness and comfort with a couple of deep breaths. Um, Love that. I always recommend deep breathing as a practice anyway. And finally, to just do something, anything to feel a sense of movement in a positive direction. So those are just the greatest little tips for me. And I love having practical action steps that can be taken when you're dealing with a situation. And and for me, I understand my procrastination comes from some old unhealed wounds. It comes from some limited thinking. There's some things I need to work on still, but I may not be able to fix the procrastination completely right here and now in this moment. It's something I'll be working on over time. And meanwhile, I don't want the procrastination to interfere with doing important work that I want to get done. So I think this self-compassion break will help me in the moment to move myself out of the procrastination, self-blame, downward spiral so that I can actually get something done. But realistically, I know like I will have to do a self-compassion break every single time I sit down to write, even every time I think about sitting down to write, because that alone is enough to make all these negative thoughts come into my head. But I love this as a simple little tool a few things to say to myself, hand over my heart and acknowledge my feelings, let them be there, breathe through them, and then hopefully move on to something positive. So I am excited to try this for my procrastination and hopefully I won't procrastinate about trying this technique, um, but I'm planning to use it today, in fact, right after I finish this recording. So I'm sharing it with you in case maybe it's helpful to you too. I have no idea if other people experience some of these situations that I find myself in, but that's what I promised in this podcast. I would be sharing with you my own spiritual journey and the issues that come up for me and how I'm figuring it out and what I'm finding to help me get through it, to help me learn and grow and keep moving toward being the best person that I can be. So that's all I need to share with you today to talk about procrastination. And we'll see, we'll see how the future goes. Maybe I'll check back in and let you know if this is working for me. So until we're together again next week, remember that we're here for love. So no matter what we create or what we do or accomplish, if in any way we're learning how to love, how to bring more love into the world, then that's it. That's all we really need to do. So face your fear, be ready for whatever life throws at you next, because there will be something we can count on that. And love each and every moment of your very precious life. Bye-bye.